Hey, hello gang. Good afternoon. Yeah, it's like uh, 12 in the afternoon, right on the head. Yeah, I forgot my mic. And I'm out with the gang. We are heading to the doctors. Yes, the, the vet for lilac. Yeah, and I have the gang with me. Let me show you them. See them? Yeah, it's a cool day. It's a cool day. And, um, yeah, it's a cool day. And, I mean, not, I mean, not cold, but, uh, it was comfortable. It's in the 70s. Uh, very cloudy, so we don't get direct sunlight. So it's pretty good weather for the dogs, actually. Yeah, they don't do well in sunlight. So, um, yeah, I'm heading to the vet. I'm gonna go into the ER um, for lilac. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't want to really risk it, you know. It's enough with little lilac. She's the delicate of the three little pooches. Side. Yeah, she's the delicate of my little furry friend and I don't want to risk her. I, I was very anxious last night for her. I felt scared but I tried to like, you know, soothe her and talk softly to her. She was act, starting to act different again. She, um, Sorry. Yeah, what, what was happening? She was acting different. It was really hard to really pinpoint. Uh, you're the, you're the middle one. She started steering again. Like, I had her on the bed. I think she was like barking a little bit. And I thought maybe she just uncomfortable. She wanted to, yeah. She she went to the edge of the bed, like in gesture of "Mommy, please put me down on the floor." So I took her off the bed, put it down, and um, she was easily agitated, you know, uh, meaning like sometimes I started to talk, and then she'd get uh, like startled and things like that, very easily excited. And this is a very, sorry. And this is a very easy going dog. Very easy going. Just trying to navigate here. So she's very easy going. And it's not her, she, and, and everything is calm with her. No noise startles her, she just sits there and just stares at you. So I don't know what's really going on with her. Um, then I think I put her back on the bed, then I had to put it back down. Then when I put it down, she wants to crawl under the bed. You know, first it seemed like she had difficulty. She says, okay, uh, maybe her leg is, you know, she's, she's recuperating from back surgery from two months ago. And uh, her leg seemed a little stiff, stiffer, you know, because I was massaging her leg and her body earlier. And I know it just seems, she seemed tight in her legs again and I thought she was recuperating well she's uh she wants to move about more but I was thinking maybe she might be um maybe she's moving around too much 
and she needs to stay more mobile. And maybe massaging her leg and stretching out her legs. Maybe it, it was a little bit too much for that day's activity. So she couldn't really bend her legs to go under the bed well. But either way, it's, it was something. I, and I some, said to her, you know, I wish I knew what was wrong so I could help you. So she does go under the bed. Then she barks. She gives one of her high-pitched barks. Like, you know, demanding. There's a, a pause. And then she does it again. Well, with, with, with the first bar, definitely. I, I looked under the bed, and she's just sitting, you know, sitting up under the bed. And I didn't know what was going on. I said, are you okay, baby? And then, um, let's see. If I keep her there, you know, she's, she's not like gesturing or anything. In fact, she moves away from the opposite to the opposite side of the bed so I couldn't grab her if I wanted to. So because she started barking again, like those high-pitched barks, like de demanding. So I got out of bed, walked over on the other side of the bed to get her. So that's all. Maybe uh, then she starts to like Flat-faced dogs, they have this thing called uh, like a sneeze. I mean, it's, it's like a reverse sneeze that they do. And she starts to do this. So it's okay, maybe the, the ears too dusty in the apartment. So I get my air, air filter and I put it in the room. I turn it on. And I also put the air conditioner on, thinking maybe it's too stuffy. So I had the air conditioner going on, the air filter going on. And I'm thinking, hopefully this works. But, um, still. So I think I put her back on, no, I bring her outside. I said, okay, I'll put her outside in the living room and maybe this might be better for her. But uh, she starts to bark again. And it's exciting the other dogs. Then they stop barking. But they think she's in distress. So I go out and check up on her. So she's not like lying, so she's not like lying down. I mean, she's, she's, she won't stay comfortable. And I couldn't figure out, so I'll bring her back in the room because she's gonna be doing this and upsetting my other two dogs. So I said, you know, I'm gonna put her in her crate. Um, maybe the bed. It's, it's moving her spine too much. And once she needs something stable on the ground. So I put her in the crate. And then she doesn't like that. She starts barking about that. So I, so I take the crate off the ground and put it on the bed next to me. So it took her quite a while for her to calm down. She takes a while to calm down. She eventually goes to sleep. I eventually go to sleep. This morning, she seems okay. Um, she had an appetite. She didn't immediately come when she saw us preparing their breakfast. She doesn't do, you know, but she does come by herself. So she's not completely how she was when initially got her to the doctors two months ago for to discover she needs back surgery okay but with her when um when because she's pretty a stable dog you know but the barking 
Yeah, even when, you know, you guys see it, when I go out and about on my little adventures to the park, and if I stand too long in one spot, let's say waiting for uh, the red light to change, you hear her barking sometimes, she gives that bark. So she never used to do that really. Yeah, now she does it all the time. I bring her to the ramble and we're in the shade. I have her water, her treats. Some of you, what's popping in my mind, <laughs> some of you may say, hey, she's just a spoiled dog. You know, that could actually be. That could actually be what it all is because she knows that she could get a lot of attention and more food. Yeah, she's been picking up weight and uh, she is getting a little bit more physical activity. So, yeah, uh, I, I'll, I'll be. I feel really awful if, um, yeah, I called them and it was like a wait on the phone, the, the medical center where she had the surgery. And I had the option to do the emergency room or try to make an appointment. And I didn't want to wait, I hung up. I said, look, if something is really underlying underlying problem that could exacerbate and like one minute she's fine and then boom like the, the day she got sick she woke up fine that two months ago playful we go out for a walk for one hour I, I carried her uh, we just walked around the block and I had the other gang with me and everything seemed fine everything until when it was uh, dinner time she didn't come for dinner and I was wondering what was going on so yes yeah, so I said you know oh I, oh, I thought it might have been a heat stroke or something like that then my heat, my, my air conditioner is not working. So I call the, uh, tech, what do you call it, the, 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 the fixer-uppers at the building, the handyman. <laughs> and they come and uh, check out the, you know, fix the problem. And I put it over the air conditioner to cool it down, think that might be a problem. And I have these ice packs. But a behavior, it's just something weird. She doesn't, she refuses her food. So I waited an hour later and she takes her food. I said, okay, that's a good sign. And then uh, after din her dinner, she, you know, she goes in her area where she goes and she's just sitting there. She doesn't do, she doesn't just stare around in space. She'll just would lie on the floor and just go to sleep. She eats and sleeps. <laughs> That's her. That's the little Shih Tzu. So I, I, I don't know what to make out of it. And I said to myself, you know, she's not herself. Her behavior. So in a nutshell, I bring her to the ER twice that night. The second night they kept her. Uh, they said about her spine, she needs surgery. So, and her recovery, you know, she came out of the anesthesia fine, but she, but her emotions were erratic. And I've never seen her like that. So, um, I mean, it could be she had too much activity and her back was hurting, maybe. That, I mean, that's one thing with dogs. Dogs behave differently to pain. The people, you know, when they're in pain, 
Luca, they can tell you. They can say, ouch. Yes, yeah, so I see it's 1217 and it's 75 degrees. Nice. So, um, yeah, I was in extreme anxiety yesterday. And I said, you know, just, see, I don't want to go because this COVID thing and the surgery put so much stress on her. Dogs get under stress. Dogs don't like going to the doctors. And I want to eliminate as much anxiety from her. Yeah, I did give her a little bit of the meds, uh, her anti-anxiety medicine. I didn't give her the fuller dose because I was afraid. I don't want to overdose her. And so, uh, and I think in case um, an emergency uh, because of the, the medicine that's already in there I don't want to interact with anything that the hospital will, will have to give her you know um, so I, I gave you just part of it like almost a little more than half the amount I gave a 0 0.3, I think it's called MLs, and I, I was to give a 0 0.5, so I just gave a little less than the amount. I'm glad it did because she was just acting weird after <laughs> the meds. So. Yeah, I really care for her. And um, if anything happens to her, and because I, I didn't follow up enough, yeah, I didn't want to bring her back. Yeah, these things stress, stress you little pits out. It's stressful. But, you know, it's been uh, eight weeks about about eight weeks let's see, let me see um, yeah about eight weeks a little more than eight weeks since surgery and then you know maybe something could have shifted in her spine and so I'm thinking of a back brace they have this thing called this uh, this thunder thunder shirt sometimes those could be uh, get anxiety when they have thunderstorms and she does too she does and I had bought it for them before I can't find I might have given it you know discarded it so I've tried it for the thunder <laughs> doesn't do a damn thing but that it, it's it's snug and so I'm thinking my give her back support so after this um, if they say, you know, basically, you know, she just needs to be uh, immobile again, then I'll just do that. Probably get the, uh, the Thunder shirt, keep her snug, keep her back more stationary, and uh, keep her in the crate. Just do, I'll just do that. Yeah. So yeah, it'll take me a good a good hour to walk there. That's where I'm going now. I'm going to 67th Street, way, 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 way over on the east side. Yeah, over an hour walk. I thought it'd also be fun to share this experience with you. And I like doing these uh, walkabouts because it helps uh, calm me a little bit. Oh, let me tell you something. So 
something just came to my memory. Um, yesterday I went to the store, uh, fabric shop. Yeah, the fabric stores are open now, at least some of them. You know, I, I live near areas where they have things like that. And, um, sorry. <laughs> this hair so um, I went to get some fabric and I went by myself and this uh, these two ladies were being serviced and the store clerk sees me says hello you know hello and you know just signal to me and so I walk in the back where he was those two ladies they were finishing up um, I didn't like how he was talking to me um, very abrupt very abrupt and I didn't like it and I thought he was rushing me I thought he was rushing me and he'll he just tell me anything for me to just buy anything. So I did I didn't want to stereotype him that because of his background that that's what the cause of it was. But I know it was, he was uh, I was getting agitated with me. So I asked him, I said, hey, um, hey, um, you seem kind of, kind of like something's bothering you. Yeah, hey, what, what, what's going on? Because I'm letting him know, hey, you know, I'm uh, here and you how, how you're acting. I, I don't like it. That's what I'm trying to convey. But presenting it that way. So he could then respond like, oh, I'm sorry, or whatever, you know, um, but to let him know. Oh, well, they got the um, Hall Halloween decorations now. Look at that. Interesting. See that? Wow. <laughs> yeah, almost, almost two, uh, almost two months. You know, eight or seven weeks. Wow. So either way, um, so guess what? Well, there was a problem, all right. He tells me 20 minutes prior, he got a phone call from uh, someone that his cousin who lives in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, had just committed murder. He had taken a gun and shot his girlfriend, and she's dead. And how, you know, they come to the country for the American dream, I think he said, and look at this, his life is ruined now. All finished. I was horrified. I told officer, "I'm really sorry. My condolences. I, I, I didn't expect that." And it's something other in the past. Other immigrants who are doing a service uh, to to me. And he got this other, yeah. <laughs> and uh, thanks. So, guys, I love crush. My eye itches. <laughs> I know you're being considerate, but it was the part of the. 
so this other fellow started roughing me up. You know, he was, he was the hairdresser, a barber. And this guy's being real rough with me. And, and, and I said, ouch, I heard him. Well, he was on the phone too. And what his problem was, was that his relatives in the country he's from want, felt that he should send more money home. And he didn't like that. And he's fussing and everything like that. I've never been in a position that I had to take care of someone. But amongst many of our uh, immigrants, your money that you make is, oh, this is pretty. Wow, that is nice. That is beautiful. I had to show that. Yeah. So, what um, some people rely on every penny you send home. And they hear solely to make money and send home. I mean, I commend them for having such dedication to their families. But sometimes these people that come here, they're exploited by their relatives. Yep. Oh yeah, no, no another girl too. And uh, same thing, she said, well, you know, you know, they you know, send money home every month and they, sometimes it's not enough, we want more. And this girl was a giver. <laughs> yeah. So either way, um, yeah, this happened just yesterday. This was in the early afternoon. And so this thing happened sometime in the morning. And he's in custody, the, the, the killer, and killed his own girlfriend. Wow. This is really something, how a life could change in an instant. Here, we have a thing called, um, you know, the, this um, racial tension. And here, the person that you had to watch out for was someone that you're dating.